Hey y'all. I'm gonna try printing this thing. But I want to uh, see if we can go live with it. You do have to hold on for a minute though while I share the stream URL. Let me know if you're there. I don't see anybody logged on yet. I'm getting ready to spread the spread the link out there. Hey, what's up, folks? This one's streaming from my cellular connection, which isn't as high uh, bit rate as my Starlink one, but is maybe a little more stable. And I thought it might be fun to um, try the very first prints um, from... The plate I've been engraving. Sorry, I'm doing two things at once. Try the very first prints from the plate I've been engraving live so that y'all could watch. What do you think? You ready to see this live? Just a minute and I will do it. It's going to be awesome. I'm just, I'm trying to get so I can see comments uh, once I set up this camera to point at the print. Because right now I could not see comments and that would be a bummer. So we're going to test it out. We're going to run a print. It's going to be awesome. And that is the goal. So if you're here, say something. There we go. Setting that up there. Let's turn this camera around here. And let's get ready. Oh, we're so close. I have to ink it up first. gloves for this. Hey Rob, how's it going? So this is the, uh, this is the plate I've been working on forever now. I just finished it today and I am going to run a print on it and it'll be the first prints and we'll see how it does. This is exciting. Let's look at the setup here a little bit. So we've got some paper soaking. This is a stack of paper that I'm gonna to use to blot the water. Here is my um, plate that I just finished engraving. And here is the press. Now this is a, uh, a die cutter that I'm actually using as a printing press because it was really cheap to do that. And so that was awesome. All right, so the first thing I need to do now is put some ink on here. So let's set this up so that y'all can watch me put ink on the thing without getting in my way. Yeah, this is some pretty, uh, pretty old school stuff. So this is special ink specifically for intaglio. So it's nice and thin and it flows really well. So it gets down into all those cracks.
and crevices. And there are probably smarter ways to do this. If I had uh, taken a class or something, maybe I would know, but I am just goofing around and figuring it out. So I spread it on thick, 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 mega thick. Like I'm sure this is about 10 times thicker than what I actually need to, but like there's so much ink here. This is gonna last me so long. I'm not worried about wasting ink at all. All right, so once you get the ink on the plate, then you have to turn around and wipe it back off. That makes sense, right? So there are a number of ways to do this. This cloth is like cheesecloth, basically. And I see it a lot in printmaking. There's probably a name for it. Then there's probably, I'm guessing, a better way to do this part, because this is awkward. Oof, look at all that ink. And then we fold it over and get some fresh surface on here. And we start doing circles. rubbing that excess ink off. And this is newspaper wadded up in this material. And it helps rub it off. And the ink just stays down in the crevices, except now, you see that this is where a pro would tell me to do something different. See, now I've got all this ink around these edges here that I'm making a, a mess of all up in my business. I don't want to make a mess of this in my business. Okay. Now I have seen videos of the pros doing this stuff and they will take their hand across it right before they run it. But these are powdered gloves, and I think the powder is gonna hurt it. Well, and then I drug my hand into this, which is gonna make a mess. So there's the plate with ink on it. Oh, that's so beautiful. Damn, that's sexy. All right, so the plate has ink on it. Let's put it in place. So that goes there, and then we're gonna get some paper and blot that. Oh, oh, I got ink everywhere. Whoa, I'm so bad at this. All right. Ink everywhere. Get a towel here. Oh. Okay. Let's get this one that's been soaking. Now I'm trying a couple paperweights. This one's a lot thinner and you can see this is not going to work because it's tearing. Uh, but we'll get to that one in a minute. This one's a lot thicker and I think it'll work well. And then I'm just going to throw this in here to blot the extra water off of it. Okay, we're almost there. The moment of truth. I see someone else joined. There it is. It's got ink in the grooves. Oh, it's exciting. So exciting. And we've just blotted our paper. Now I just need to get the paper back out. Oh. And here we go. All right, 
Papers on. Papers on. Oh, this is exciting. And then we lay our, uh, our felt over the paper. And then this over top of that. All right. We're so close, folks. We are so close. And here we go. Here we go. First run. Y'all see that? Yeah, you can. First run. Got to get it started. Here we go. This printing press is compressing the paper down onto the plate. And hopefully it's pulling that ink out into the paper. This could be a mess, folks. I do not know. Oh, yeah. So we're done. Moment of truth. Moment of truth. Okay, so this is a good sign. So you can see this ridge depression. That means we got good pressure all the way around. And I'm going to peel that back and it will reveal the image and we'll see if it's any good. I don't want to do it one handed. Sorry. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. Not bad. Not great, but not bad. So we have Pretty good transfer. The skull turned out great. The tools turned out great. Shadows up under the teeth. Might want to dirty up those teeth a little bit. The or die turned out okay. Not bad. That is fuzzy. That makes stuff. I think I need to do a little bit of refinement on that section. Let's look at these little, the embroidery hoop came through beautiful. Welding hood, that worked out great. Sewing machine, that turned out very nice. The uh, knitting Needles are kind of hard to spot, but they're there. Hand plane, pretty good. Kind of hard to pick out from the background on it. Really, I'm happy with this. I'd be happier if, if that lettering there was more crisp, and I think I can do that by, hmm, I don't know. I'm going to have to fight with that a little bit, I think, because it looks good up there hmm hmm i like this kind of splotchiness on the on the white areas that's called plate tone and that's just you know your your plate has a tendency to hold ink and uh boy i think it looks great okay let's set that aside to dry You know, I'm curious if we run it without putting more ink on it, what'll happen? So let's just grab this paper that's gonna be ruined anyway because it's torn. It's just too soft. Let's use this. If I can even get it out of the water without it falling apart. Let's blot this. Oh, it's way too wet. Oh, and it's gonna come apart. And this will be a good experiment. All right, we're gonna blot this one dry. If it doesn't, oh, it's falling apart. Yeah, this paper is definitely not going to work for my needs. Well, let's just try it anyway, because what else do we have going on? And we're trying this without adding more ink to the, uh, to the plate. So 
It's going to be interesting. Let's move you back over here. We're working with the ink that was already on the plate. Oh, that is way too wet. Oh, well. Like you can see it sucking down the moisture onto the plate, which means that it's just going to be blurry. So let's... Yeah, I don't know if cutting deeper around the text would help. I've got some spots that have deep cuts. Um, and I get white lines there, actually, because the ink doesn't get pushed all the way up to the paper. What you have to do is make one side hold the ink better somehow without going too deep, which could mean just roughing up the surface. Maker's End suggests that maybe it was too much ink that was making it blurry and that a second pressing with the proper paper, not this ruined paper, will actually look prettier. Well, let's find out what this paper did and see what you think. So, again, this is the wrong paper. That's interesting, kind of kind of a cool effect. So let's prepare a little bit more of the right paper. Um, let me find somewhere to hang this. <clears throat> so this uh, Strathmore printmaking paper is what I've been using and it's been okay. Um, I think it's just a matter of me figuring out the best ways to do this stuff. So let's drop in some paper to soak. Just two more sheets. It wants to warp until you get it fully submerged. There we go. All right. We're getting there. We're getting there. Now, another thing I could try, another thing I could try is uh, I have thicker ink too. And I suspect a thicker ink might, um, might work a little bit better. Trying to get some ink off of here. There we go. Okay. You know what I need is some newspaper. There we go. Get some newspaper. We'll use that to wipe off some ink. Let's try this again. Let's try this again. So, you know, I've also got a roller for like rolling the ink in and pressing it in. Maybe I should use that. I don't know. Um, put a glove on my hand so I don't get ink everywhere. this ooey gooey ink so I'm curious if I just used this roller if it would push it down into the grooves better or is that just silly to think that it would help Mm. I'm not sure it's getting down in there. I can kind of see light spots down in those down in those deep grooves. Oh, it is easier than scooping it around though. Maybe 
just need to apply a little bit more ink. Oh, I got people telling me what's up. The roller is probably the right tool, he says. She says, they say. Um, you know, it is definitely the right tool for lino cut. But this is kind of closer, not quite, but closer to like intaglio, where you want it, you want the ink way down in the grooves, not on the tops. So lino cut, you want the ink on the tops of everything. And with this, you want the ink down, way down in those grooves. And then you want to wipe it off of the top. And the roller, just from looking at this, you probably can't see it on that camera, but the roller just kind of spreads it over the top without getting it down into the grooves. Of course, the cheesecloth also helps with that. It kind of pushes it into the grooves whenever you're uh, rubbing it around. Up yet? bit. Yeah, I wasn't familiar with intaglio either. I was only familiar with lino cut when I started doing this. And um, I really liked, see now I rub it off, so I don't want it on the tops. I rub it off of the tops. I just really liked the effect that this produces and the details you can get out of this that you can't necessarily get with like lino cut where it's just on the surface. Oh, this thing's getting full, full of ink. So you rub it all off. Now, that thing's getting so full of ink, I don't know if it's really doing as good of a job as it could. And I've seen people use newspaper, watered up, and we're gonna try that. Hopefully the newspaper doesn't scratch it up too much. I think it's scratching it. And the newspaper does not pull ink away like that cheesecloth does. Oh. I see. I see why we use the cheesecloth. See, I'm learning too. I'm learning all this as you watch. So the cheesecloth is really good at pulling that ink away. Yeah, oh my goodness. That's like a whole different tool. Okay, so now I know. I got a bunch of this cheesecloth, so. Now I know to use it. Now I'm paying extra attention up here to this make stuff part. Ideally, you want to get like almost all of the ink off. I mean, it just takes so little to get the image on the paper. I mean, that looks pretty good to me, but you know, my lack of experience is showing here. I don't really know what to look for other than it just kind of looks nice and clear. Okay, that looks good to me. Geeksmithing, man, what's up? 
So this is with ink on, and you can see the ink is just down in the grooves. Oh, that looks so badass. Okay. All right, so let's try, let's try printing one with it this time. Now another thing it could be is pressure. More pressure might be good. Uh, and I could do that by adding more felt, more layers of felt on top of it. I'm gonna just grab a little extra felt here. And all right, so we're gonna get some paper. We're gonna blot it in here. So we wanna put it like right there, that'll work. Blot this paper down so that it's not quite so wet. Let me gotta find it again. It can hide sometimes. All right. Now we're gonna place this paper, which has been soaked and blotted and what we had before was two felt blankets and I think I'm going to add a third for some additional pressure and these kind of stick to themselves so I've got to be careful laying it down so I don't drag everything and this plate goes on top and this helps kind of stabilize everything and here we go. So, um, Pile of Stuff is asking, does the paper need to deform down to the grooves? Yes. That's why we soak it, I think. Uh, and that's why we apply tons and tons of pressure. And Maker's End is saying, you wonder if the cross hatching on the top lettering is allowing more ink out to create the fuzzy look. I suspect it's because there's not a big enough difference in the density of the cross hatching of the lettering and the background in that area. Like when I made it, I didn't, I didn't uh, create enough contrast between the two surfaces to really make it uh, stand out. We'll see though. All right, so we went through one way, coming back through the other. And we're going to see how it does. All right, let's try, uh, let's try giving you a better angle here. No, no, maybe like right there. All right, we'll try that. Okay. Let's get this out of the way. Get these off of here and see we've got good pressure see how you can see this edge that's raised because it's been smashed down onto the plate that's good I mean that's good pressure so let's see what it looks like <gasps> oh it's so pretty okay all right now let's look at it it's still a little bit blurrier than I would like. A little bit fuzzier than I would like. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get away from that. That's kind of... Um, so the, the overall kind of gray color here from what I've gathered, that's the tone of your print. And that's because the surface of this is not perfectly smooth and clean, so it's kind of gathering some ink on its own. And so this overall has a very warm tone to it. But look at that sucker. Now what's interesting is the deep grooves. So, you know, like I was saying before, well, like I was saying before, I've got these super deep grooves like around the skull. And you can see them here, they look like black lines. If you look here though, if you look here, 
their white lines because the, they're too deep. The ink goes down in them and it's not coming back up. So we've got white outlines. Now, if I didn't point that out to you, you might not notice or care. Now, I think I can lighten up the tone a little bit more by cleaning it better. And then I, when I was watching videos of this, I was seeing people after the, after those are drying over there, after people would um, wipe the ink off, they would take their bare palm and rub across it. And I guess your palm can pick up more of the ink and get it out of there uh, just off the surface. Now again, I'm gonna try a second off of the same inking and see if a second run on that same inking will, uh, will work. I don't know. I mean, I've got the paper right here ready. Just gotta, oh, just gotta blot it. Blot it down so it's not quite so wet. We'll let this one stay a little bit wetter though. We want, we want those fibers to get down in there. All right. And then we bring you back over here. And we're gonna put this on there like that. And then we put our blanket on there. We want it to be nice and cozy as it goes through the machine. Interesting that the print kind of looks like the metal in the way that it's shaded. Yeah, so that's the, the plate tone, right? That's kind of what I was referring to earlier. And from what I can gather, because again, nobody's taught me how to do this. I've just been watching YouTube videos. Your plate tone is the effects of the, the variations on your plate um, transferring to the uh, material. And it, that's why it looks like the plate. Because you're seeing those little imperfections on the on the top of the plate being transferred over. If I had kept this plate perfectly clean and uh, all this, Sean J is asking what made me get into this old method? Um, the world of YouTube is so fast and big and wow and everything has to be amazing that, that it was stressing me out. Uh, so I wanted to do something that was maybe a little less so. And this is a lot more uh, calm. Second printing with the same ink. Now look at this. That's interesting. Now let's, let, let's compare. Here's the, here's the first one I ran. So here's a second printing without a re-ink. Look at that. Well, I, I think if, if this is the best it gets, I think I'm happy with that. Like there's some things that I've learned that I'll do differently now. For example, those outlines, I would prefer if those outlines could be black and so you don't even notice the white outlines on this one and go over to this one. You can see I'm pretty, pretty stark. Try a third. Hmm, a third printing without extra ink. I mean, can't hurt anything. I just don't have any paper prep, so give me just a minute here. Give me just a minute here, and we'll prep some more paper. You will be able to buy a print. I'm going to put these on Etsy. Be sure to... Um, you know, probably if you want to buy one, um, make sure you're following me on Twitter or Instagram. Oh, it was you who asked Geek Smithing. You're following me, and I can remember to message you. Um, if I mean, once these dry up, I'll sign them and I'll throw them on uh, on 
on Etsy probably. I'll probably end up, I think once I'm happy with it, I'm gonna do maybe 20 of them and then I'll sell the plate. I'll probably put the plate on like eBay, I don't know. So these pieces of paper are just soaking and somebody wants to see what happens if we run a third print off of the plate without re-inking. So here are our previous ones. That was a, a fresh ink. That was a second pass without re-inking. That was a fresh ink. Yeah, you got one of those patches. That's right. One of those patches that I made. It seems like I saw one of those, uh, a failed one, just yesterday around here somewhere in my little pile of workshop junk here. This stuff is expensive though. You'll be surprised when I list it, how much I list it for. I'm thinking like 45 each. Um, just this paper, like this stuff is like, I want to say it was like a couple bucks a sheet. And then the ink is like super expensive. Um, I always wondered why people who do limited prints like priced it so high and now I get it. Cause this stuff is expensive and it took me so long to make this plate. And copper only has a limited amount of runs, believe it or not because the surface degrades. So a third pressing, I suspect, is going to be worthless. But there's only one way to find out. I mean, only one really good way. So here we go. Third pressing. We're gonna go nice and slow to allow it to soak that ink out. And while I'm doing this with my other hand, I'm clicking over to see what's going on on my Facebook. Multitasking. And we bring it back through nice and slow. I kind of wish I could adjust it to have even more pressure on this plate uh, right now without redoing it. All right, it's through. Here we go. Pretty faint. It actually looks better through my iPhone here than it does to the naked eye. That's interesting. To the naked eye, this is too faint. This is all way too faint. Like if I bought this, I'd be sad because it's just like, just barely there. Um, but the iPhone kind of compensates a bit. So it looks a little bit better maybe on the stream than it does in real life. Like from across the room, like this one looks just beautiful, although maybe a tiny bit faint. Like the lettering here is perfect and the skull there is perfect. Actually that one, that one looks better. But the lettering here is just, ah, oh, it's just gorgeous. Oh, make stuff or die. My goodness. Yeah, third pressing. See, I won't I won't sell that one. Or if I do, I'll sell it for much 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 cheaper or something and throw some other stuff in. Look at that. Didn't even get all the lettering. Well, that's kind of nasty. Okay, so we got <sighs> conclusive evidence. Conclusive evidence that maybe I need to clean the ink off of the plate better before I run the run the the thing through. Now, like I was saying, a uh, pile of stuff, you say it doesn't look that bad. 
but I'm telling you, it looks better through, I'm holding the, the iPhone up and it looks better through the iPhone than it does to my naked eye. To my naked eye, that is just kind of sad how, um, how washed out it is. I, I'm actually really surprised how good it looks through the iPhone. Like, this doesn't even make any sense. Um, weird. But I won't be selling that one. So, I mean, I've got some paper in here. Um, and I got nothing better to do. So why don't I throw some more paper in there? And I'll run a few more batches. And you all are welcome to hang out with me while I do so. Let's get that soaking. I gotta remember to use the bottom sheet first. Here, let's put that on top. There we go. And let's re-ink this sucker. But before we do, I gotta get some new cheese cloth because that other one is just absolutely filled with gunk. Here, come with me. Come with me. While I look for scissors. Look at this mess. Oh my goodness. You see the scissors? It's like Blue's Clues. Do you see the scissors? Point to the scissors. There they are. Okay. All right. So this stuff is interesting. It can be washed. Um, and what you do is you wrap this uh, around newspaper. And this is what was really pulling that ink off of the surface really well. And rubbing it down into the cracks really well. And I got a ton of that stuff. Now they say you can wash it. But that one there is ruined. The, the little tiny tabs on the copper tear it apart. And it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. All right. Yeah, that workbench has definitely lived in. It's, uh, it's been through some years of chaos. So I need some newspaper watered up inside this thing. That's not quite big enough. All right, that feels better. Yeah, that'll work real well. Okay. Gloves, you get this ink everywhere. Even wearing gloves, you get it everywhere. It's a nightmare. Get some gloves on here. And you know the roller? I got that roller for um, lino cut, and I really think it's the wrong tool for the job here. Um, it wasn't getting it down into the grooves, and I'm sure it would if I really, really piled on the, the ink, but like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to have like even more ink everywhere just to use the roller. I'm starting to remember, it's, it's been months since I watched any videos on this. I'm starting to remember that they did, once they squeegeed this on, they would squeegee at all different angles to really make sure that it's getting uh, into the grooves. And then their cleaning process was very good, but I need to go back and watch some videos and see how they don't get it all over this, this the surface underneath it. Because that is what's getting ink everywhere. 
it gets under there and then I touch it and drag it around and it's just everywhere. I should really be wearing an apron right now so I don't get ink all over my clothes, but I'm not. I even have a nice apron I could be wearing just for this. All right. So, if we've learned anything so far, our wager is if I clean this off really well, we'll get an all right first print and a beautiful second print. What do you think? Place your bets now. Place your bets now. Yeah, this stuff fills up quick, but it gets it off so well. Now I suspect if I clean this well enough, we can get that first print to look like a second print. Wouldn't that be nice? I mean, look, oh, oh, I ruined it. Look how clean that is. You wouldn't even think that would work. See, I can't get it. I'm getting ink every, ah, ah, ah. Okay, gloves coming off. I think this is it. I think this is gonna be beautiful. Look at that. Doesn't even look like it has ink on it. Does it? Now, here we go. Let's put this over here. All right, put your wagers in now. What's gonna be prettier, first print or second print? Huh? Yeah? All right, let's get some paper. You know, also, I'll bet real print artists have a certain way of soaking their paper and maybe even a certain paper uh, that's better for this. This is lightweight printmaking paper, but I believe it's predominantly used, again, for um, lino cut or similar block cut. Uh, I suspect intaglio, which again, this is not quite intaglio, but it's similar. I suspect it uses a different paper and you would soak it for maybe a specific amount of time. All right, folks. Get our blankets on. Get our plate on top. You know, I kind of wonder also if this plate doesn't really help anything and if I'd be better off to just hit the roller directly. All right, here we go. All 
Okay. Okay. All right. Oh no. Well, it, it still looks a little fuzzy. Um, it looks better on camera than it does in person. It still looks a little fuzzy. And look at this down here. That's wood grain from the ink on the underside of the plate getting into this wood. That is annoying. I don't like that. I mean, I just need to clean it and be more careful, but that makes me unhappy. I mean, it's not the end of the world, but... Now, that being said, that's a good print. The letters are clearish, more or less. Skull looks good. You can make out the, uh, the sewing machine, the hand plane. Oh, look at that hand plane. Holy moly. Oh yeah, look at that sucker. My goodness, that is beautiful. All right, time for a second pressing without adding more. Yeah, the white outline isn't too bad on that one. All right, second pressing without adding more ink. Put that there, put y'all here. Um, I lost it, oh, there it is. Okay. Well, this has been fun. I am quite pleased right now with the results that I've been getting out of this process. Here we go. This is the second printing on a plate without rejuvenating the ink. Now, I wonder if I should let these dry in a certain way to keep them from wrinkling. I think they'll be all right. All right, time to reveal this second printing. And it's a dud, okay. So it looks okay-ish on camera, although this one you can see better, how it just really didn't transfer well around the top of the skull. It actually looks, again, it looks better on camera than it does in person. So here's the, uh, here's the clean print, and then the second without rejuvenating the ink. So a, a good a good inking and a really good cleaning gets me one good print. <laughs> Again, you can start to see why this stuff is so expensive. You know? I need more surfaces. Why did I do this to myself? All right. So now the question is, do I keep going and make more prints tonight? Or do I stop and have to set it all back up, what, tomorrow when I feel like doing more?
Tough call. Tough call. You know what might decide it is the battery on my phone. So I think it's about dead. So let's at least, let's wrap up the stream. Yep, my battery just gave me the 10% warning. So let's wrap up the stream. So there's the plate, looks beautiful. There's the supplies. And let's look at some of these results. Trash can. Um, so here is a bad one. Here's a good one. And here's a bad one. So we have bad one, bad one, and then one, two, three, four good ones. Good night, pile of stuff. Thanks for watching. I had fun. I'll talk to y'all later. See you guys later. All right.